The filmmaker Paramita Bora, in fact, knew Jenny, Auntie Jenny, who lived in Delhi and was Helen's sister, but no one ever made that connection. And, you know, my contention is that there are only a hundred people in India, and those hundred people all know each other. You know, so everybody knows everybody else. Helen then came to Bombay, as many people did, my grandfather did, and my grandfather started working as a teacher in Antonio de Souza High School, and Helen went on to go to school for a couple of years. Uh, it is said, rather meanly, I think, that she was illiterate, largely illiterate, that she couldn't read and write. Uh, by this, uh, this, so the first time Salim sees her in this mythology that there is, is she's reading a book in order to keep people at bay. Imagine that you are dancing on a set. You are wearing very skimpy clothes, even though you have a body stocking underneath. And if you look carefully at Helen's songs, you'll find very often there's a body stocking underneath. You're sitting there and dancing. You're going to be dancing in really suggestive ways. You are not a star. This is not the time in, in Bollywood when three days are spent on doing a song. It is a time when eight hours, and you have to have the song over. Sohan Lal would come on the sets and say, Nacho Bhai, you know, do something. And she would dance very often. Okay? You look at the length of, this, of the scene, and you will see what separates a good dancer from a bad dancer. Helen's songs, for instance, you take that really, the one that I love so much, which is set in that wonderful square in, a, in some city in Paris, in Europe. There are flamingos in a corner standing, and there is a band, there is a, a little, you know, sort of band uh, stand, and there is a bar, and then the clock strikes 12, and he has not come and she goes swaying towards the, towards the bar and she drinks one last drink and she's holding the, bla the glass almost, you know, and pressing it against her face. So there's all kinds of sexual metaphoric metaphors going on there. And over the horizon, Monica, oh my darling, happens. And then, for Agha, for Agha, and then the rest of it happens. And through the course of that, magnificent song she rips her clothes off with her teeth at one point you know it's just incredibly beautiful and then she dances up the the uh, what looks like a large tongue and she dances up into this cage and he comes in this tight bole you know sort of like uh, sword fighters clothes all tightly packed inside he's a dancer we don't know and they go <laughs> down onto the ground and the lights go off and the bartender shakes his head and walks away. Giri hui aura. This was our giri hui aura. Helen. Helen. Now, what? Dancers, yes, of course there have been dancers. There were dancers after her, there were dancers before her. There was Kuku. Kuku, in fact, was, it, uh, was instrumental in getting Helen her first roles. Marlene, who was a nurse, that is Helen's mother, and Kuku played bridge together. And so one day, you know, Helen was walking around and she said, send her off to dance, I'll get her a, a job. So the first job that Helen did was she went over and she was not adequately equipped enough. Okay, so sweetly some other dancers took her aside and padded her up and presented her to... Then she did her first number, which is in a film called Ali Flela. And there's nothing much you see of Helen. It's like, you know, do you remember those scenes in which there would be a whole series of women all running like that? <laughs> and then at the, at the, in the end, there would be one woman standing up saying, Holy! Yeah? So your camera would come in and these women would go... Ta -ta 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 -ta. Literally, the camera would be actually reaping them, meaning knocking them, cutting them down. And then finally, there's one woman at the triumphant of this saying, Holy! That was Helen. That's her one moment in the film. Okay? So often, that's, and this film is dated at 1952, cut to 1981, 30 years later, Helen's still dancing. Now, nowhere in the world, now, let's just assume that popular cinema is patriarchal, and that an actress will get five years or ten years at best, and an actor will get 40 years. So Amitabh Bachchan can still be a marquee name. But Rafi, with whom he did his largest number of, of, of films, was first his sister-in-law in Reshma Shera, and then went on to being his lover in, in serious films, including that dreadful Jurmana, where she's holding her sari around her portly form, and then Mukaddar Ka Sikandar, where he chooses her over Rekha. You have to get a life kid, but except, of course, there was a class thing there. 
She was the aspirational other that he wanted. Whereas Rekha was beneath him. The giri hui aurat, again, you know. Zohra bhai with her, with her, her ring with the, the poison in it. All kinds of like Zohra, Zeher, very close postmodern connections. It is a magnificent moment. A magnificent film as well, Mukaddar Ka Sikandar. 